Hi everyone, welcome to Data Leveling. In today's video, we'll be exploring how we can perform face swap using Confi UI on both images and videos. We will learn how to perform face swap on an image level and understand how it works. We will then proceed to use the same technique on a video as the video is basically just many frames of images being put together. We will require inside face for this node to work so you can watch my Windows inside face installation guide first to install it. Now for the dependencies, we will be using Reactor. Head over to your Confi UI manager, search for Reactor and install the Reactor node for Confi UI. Next, we will search for video and install the video helper suite that will be useful for video loading and video combine. We will then search for frame and install the Confi UI frame interpolation node that will help us interpolate our frames to make the video look smoother with less flickering when merging the frames together. Lastly, we will search for was node and install the was node suite. Now we will restart your Confi UI to install the packages. As for the models, we will head over to the Reactor GitHub repository. Click on installation, open the tab for Confi UI and install both the code formal and GFP gun models. These models should go into your Confi UI models folder, face restore models folder. The folder should be created when you restart Confi UI. Alright, let's get started. So let's say we have two images here and we want to swap the face over from the bottom one to the top one. Let's use the reactor node to do this. We can find it by right click, add node, reactor. Reactor Fast Face Swap Let's go through the parameters here The swap model is the one responsible for performing the face swap action Currently, we only have the inswapper128 as that's the only open source model inside face has provided us with Face detection here is to use to detect the bonding box of the faces in the image before performing the swap action you could use the Retina face model or the YOLO V5 model, both works well for face detection. The input image is the face that we want to replace and the source image is the face that we want to use. So because the open sourced face swap model is only able to generate 128 pixels, you can see all our swaps are blurry, therefore we require a face restoration model. We have two options here, code former or GFD gun. For the code former, we have a code former weight option. How this works is a smaller weight produces a higher quality image, while a larger weight improves the fidelity or what we call the degree of exactness of the face. The face restore visibility is the clarity of the faces being swapped. If you set it to 1, it will show the maximum clarity of the faces. For detect gender, if we select female, only the female faces in the image will be detected and perform the swap process. As for face index, it is for selecting which face you want to use in the case where there are multiple faces in an image. If there is only one face in the image, you will just select 0. The face index is counted from the left to the right and then from the top to the bottom. Remember that in programming, the first item starts at index 0 and not 1. We can also swap multiple faces in one pass. For example, in an image like this, let's say we want to swap the Mark Zuckerberg face to Ronaldo and Elon Musk face to Messi. For our source face index, it will be 0, 1 and for our input face index, it will also be 0, 1. We could also swap both faces to Elon Musk face by setting the source face index to 1, 1. Remember to not put any spacing between the commas. The console log level just shows the logs that will be printed in our console. Level 1 is usually enough information. Now for video, it is really just performing the same action to every frame in the video. Let's create a load video node. We go to add node, video helper suite, load video upload. This node is basically our video to image node and the parameters will decide how many frames we will get from this video. Let's understand the parameters here. Force rate is the number of frames per second. If you set it to a value of 0, it will just use the video's original frame rate. Force size is to change the image resolution. If you set to disabled, it will use the original image resolution. If we want to keep the aspect ratio, we will use either custom height or custom width. Once you set either or, 
The other will be downscaled or upscaled accordingly based on the scaling factor that is computed from the original image. My stock video's frame rate is 25 frames per second and this video runs for 8 seconds. This means that if we leave everything as default, we will get a total of around 200 frames depending on the milliseconds. Frame load cap is the maximum number of images we want to use. If we use 0, it will load all the image. Skip first frames is to set how many frames we want to skip and start counting the frame load cap from there. Select every end is to only select frames that are multiple of the number we set. This means that if we set it to 2, we are dividing the frame rate by half. Once our image is swapped, we will have to combine all of these frames back into a video. We will use a video combine node here. From the video helper suite, select video combine. The frame rate here is for the final output. So if let's say the output images coming out is around 200 frames, by setting this value to 25, we will get back a 8 second video. But if let's say we set it to 50, then we will get a fast forward video that only lasts for 4 seconds. For the format, depending on what you choose, there are different options. If you are using H.264 MP4, pixel format is how the pixel data is stored. The one with P10 is for 10 bits and the original one is for 8 bits. The CRF value will determine the quality and file size. Lower value correspond to higher quality and greater file size. Note that if you are using AV1, you will require to install the FFM pack on your device and set it to PATH. Loop count is how many additional times the video should repeat. And ping pong is to play back the video in reverse. For the phase swap process, we do not have to worry about VRAM issues as it is running iteratively for each swap that is happening. But this also means that the process might take a long time if you are working with long videos. Now because we are performing a phase swap action, we do not really have much control over the final output, making our video look something like this where there is a lot of pixelation. Why this happens is because as the head is rotating, Different frames of the head movement are going into the phase swap process. This might lead to some inconsistency from the current frame and the next frame, leading to the flickering that we are seeing now. So what we can do is to reduce the number of frames that will go through the phase swap action by let's say selecting every 5th frame in the video. This one works for my case as there are not a lot of big motions in this video. But if your video has a lot of big movement, you should reduce the value to maybe 2 or 3. We will then use a frame interpolation method to synthesize the frames and make the video smoother. Go to Add Notes, Confi UI Frame Interpolation, VFI, and then Film VFI. So Film or Frame Interpolation for Large Motion is developed by Google. What this does is that given two still images, it generates out the in-between frames to make it blend smoothly. Since we reduce the original frames by 5 times, we will multiply it back by 5 times. This also speeds up the entire workflow as the phase swap is the one that usually takes the most amount of time. Another thing we can do is to increase the frame interpolation multiplier, let's say we double up to 10. We then have to double up the video combined frame rate to 50. This will ensure that the video will be kept in the same duration as the original. Do take note that the frame interpolation requires a lot of VRAM. So if you are having issues with it, you may want to add a rebatch image node in between. Here are the results comparison. Now what if we have multiple faces that we want to swap in a video and some faces are changing their positions over time. Let's take this video as an example. Our target is to swap the first two men in the video with our tech giant founders. If we do it normally, we will get something like this. If you look at this point over here, when the guy at the outer left moves out of the frame, the index for that frame changes and the swap fails. So in order to fix that, we can first save all the frames so we can see which frames are being affected. For this, I will be using the WAS node suite. We go to add node, WAS suite, IO, image save. The main reason for using this instead of the built-in save image is because this one helps to create a folder within the output folder. 
therefore not clashing with the image index in the default output folder. We will set everything to false here except for preview. Let's see where the index change happened. We can see that around the 217 frame, that's where the change begin. Once the images are saved, we will go to the video helper suite, select load images path. So there are two ways we can do this. The first way is to duplicate the load image path node and then we skip and select the frames. So for the first load image node, we will set it to load image cap until 216. We will do it as per usual using the same reactor node. The second load image node, we will set it to skip the first 216 and then let it run until the end of the video. We will link it to a new reactor node, we can duplicate it. Finally, when we are done with the face swap, we have to merge the images back into a single batch and send it for frame interpolation. Go to add node, video helper suite, image, merge image batch. And for the second one, we have to change the source face index to 1 and the index face index to be 0. Now we change the path to where the images were saved previously. The other way is to use the split image batch node. Go to add node, video helper suite, image, split image batch. We will set the frame loop cap to be 0 to load up all the image in the folder and then we set the splitting index to be 216. Batch A will be the first split from 0 to 215 and Batch B will be from 216 onwards. And here is our final result. If you learned something from this video, do help to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. It will really help the channel grow and serves as motivation for me as well. If you face any difficulties following the videos, do also leave a comment and I will try my best to help you. And remember, don't stop leveling up.